Welcome to lecture six. In lecture six we are going to talk about body cavities and membranes. The thing to keep in mind is that internal organs are housed within enclosed spaces of the body. These spaces are called body cavities and these body cavities are named according to the surrounding structure. and They can be grouped into either a posterior aspect and a ventral cavity. Here's a diagram depicting the different cavities that you have within your body. On the ventral side, here we have the ventral cavity consisting of the thoracic and abdominopelvic, separated by the diaphragm. In the posterior aspect, we have the cranial cavity and the vertebral cavity. Also keep in mind that of the thoracic cavity, it is divided into equal right and left portions by the mediastinum. Please note that when you are talking about a person and speaking from the anatomical position or using directional terms, you are speaking as if you are that person. So as I mention right and left, I am mentioning right and left as if I am that person, not as it is on the figure. So right would be here and left would be there. In the posterior aspect, it contains cavities completely encased by bone. They are physically and developmentally distinct from the ventral cavity. They can be subdivided into the cranial cavity and the vertebral canal. The cranial cavity houses the brain, whereas the vertebral canal houses the spinal cord. The ventral cavity is much larger and anteriorly placed, that is towards the front of the body, but it does not completely encase organs in bone. It is separated from the, the thoracic cavity and the abdominopelvic cavity by the diaphragm. And it is also lined with serous membranes, which are continuous layers of cell providing protection to those cavities. Each serous membrane, and keep in mind that serous membrane is a general term, are made up of two layers. You have the parietal layer, which lines the internal surface of the body and the visceral layer, which covers the external surface of organs, hence viscera, which means organs, within that cavity. Between those two membranes, you have a space which is called the serous cavity. Again, this is a general term. These serous membranes secrete serous fluid. This is a liquid that serves as a lubricant to help reduce friction, caused by the movement of organs against the body wall. As an example, to help visualize the serous membrane, if you think of the fist as being an organ and the balloon as being comparable to a serous membrane, if you were to push your fist into the balloon, the inner balloon wall is like the visceral layer of the serous membrane here. The outer balloon wall is analogous to the parietal layer of the serous membrane. And the space in between is analogous to the serous cavity. The mediastinum is a space that sits at the medial aspect of the thoracic cavity. It contains the heart, thymus, esophagus, trachea, and major blood vessels that connect to the heart. Lining the mediastinum, you have a serous membrane called the pericardium. It is a two-layered serous membrane consisting of the parietal pericardium, that is the layer which forms the sac around the heart against the body cavity wall, and the visceral pericardium, which is the inner layer that forms the heart's external surface. 
The space between the, the parietal and visceral pericardium is called the pericardial cavity. This space is also filled with pericardial fluid. In the thoracic cavity, you have the pleura. It is again a two-layered serous membrane. You have the parietal pleura, which is the outer layer against the internal surface of the thoracic wall, and the visceral pleura, which is the surface covering the lungs. The space is called the pleural space or pleural cavity, and it contains again serous fluid, called the pleural fluid. As you can see from this slide, we are looking at the pericardium, which is here, and the pleura, which is in this figure here. Let's focus on the pericardium, and notice that the parietal pericardium, again, is against the thoracic wall, whereas the visceral pericardium is against the heart itself. It lines the heart. And the space in between is the pericardial cavity with serous fluid. The same can be said for the pleural cavity and pleural membrane. You have the parietal pleura, which sits against the, th the thoracic wall. You have the visceral pleura, which sits right on the surface of the organ itself. And finally, you have the pleural cavity that is filled with the serous fluid, and that is helping to reduce friction. Another cavity is the abdominopelvic cavity, and it is a cavity that can be subdivided into two different regions. At the superior aspect of the hip bones, if you drew a line in between the two, a horizontal line, it would separate it into the abdominal cavity, which is superior to that line, and the pelvic cavity, which is inferior to that line. The abdominal cavity contains most of the digestive system organs, kidneys, and ureters. The pelvic cavity contains the distal large intestine, pieces of the ureters and urinary bladder, and the internal reproductive organs. The lining of the abdominal pelvic cavity is the peritoneum. It is again a two-layered serous membrane where you have the parietal peritoneum against the walls of the abdominal pelvic cavity and the visceral peritoneum that is lining the organs of the abdominal and pelvic cavity. The space is called the peritoneal space and it contains peritoneal fluid or that serous fluid that reduces friction. In this slide we see the same figure that we had seen earlier, only now we're going to focus on the abdominal pelvic cavity, which contains the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity. Keep in mind that this is beneath the diaphragm and that you will have a parietal peritoneum against the abdominal wall and in the space you will have the organs lined with the visceral peritoneum. Now the abdominal pelvic cavity is so large that it is partitioned into nine different compartments as depicted in the figure here. Let's take the center of this tic-tac-toe grid, if you will. The center region is the umbilical region that is directly named for the navel. Beneath it you have the hypogastric region, hypo meaning below, gastric meaning pertaining to the stomach so it's below the stomach and then you have the epigastric region with epi meaning on top or above and then gastric meaning stomach again as well it sits up here on the left and right sides you will have the hypochondriac region the lumbar region and the iliac region Another way to break up the abdominal pelvic cavity is to break it up into quadrants. If you put a giant plus sign, if you will, right through the navel, you'll have a left upper quadrant, a left lower quadrant, a right lower quadrant, 
and a right upper quadrant.